I'm going to show how auditing can help you keep track of changes to purchase orders. So I'm going to go ahead and create a simple one here. Pick uh, just one item to start with. And when we save that, an audit gets logged. Now every time I change specific fields I've told it to track, such as the unit cost, another audit will get enacted. So I'll go change that to 55, hit save, and something else will happen. If I uh, remove it from hold, I have the option to approve or reject it. Um, let's say I want to go make some more changes. And the unit cost came back down because of that. So now I'm ready to go take a look. In the tool section, you first set up auditing here. Uh, once I've set it up, you have this thing called audit history. This is going to show the screen where that takes place. Uh, so you'll see that my latest change on reducing the order total because of that line total specifically is highlighted here. Uh, if I open up here, you can see where I put the thing on hold. Uh, and then this would be my initial order that I created uh, and shows all the lines as well as the purchase order. When I first set it up, I went to the audit screen and in the audit screen here you can see I've got this basic uh, field audit I set up. So you can audit all the different fields uh, to minimize the amount of fields that you're looking at, uh, I only selected a couple. So I selected the purchase order line and the purchase order. And within those, you can see I only highlighted a few of the fields that I wanted to track when changes were made to them. Turning on auditing takes a significant amount of resources if you're tracking changes to every single field on every single screen. Uh, so use this sparingly uh, as needed.